let's crack on. So how I get international clients. Um, right, Chris, who are you? Explain to everybody what you do, where you come from. I am the head of marketing for the Samara Group. Um, been here for six years about. Um, and yeah, it's essentially my job to get us the international clients. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and uh, Chris has got a wealth of experience. So talking about getting clients, let's get to, cut to the chase. Let's go to, to, to the topic we're trying to talk about today, mm. what we want to get done. Um, how do we get them? What do we do? Well, there's a few things you can do. Um, there's probably three main ones I would say work the best. Um, the first one is probably the easiest and quickest would be pay-per-click. Yeah. Um, so you pay for Google ads, LinkedIn ads, um, even Facebook ads or Bing, um, and you can get your name in front of people wherever you want in the world pretty much immediately. Um, the only problem is obviously you have to pay for that. Um, yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, the way pay-per-click works is essentially an auction. Um, there's usually about three results at the top of a Google search, and you're bidding against everyone else trying to get that keyword. So if you're trying to get um, uh, find an accountant London, let's say, as your Google search keyword, then you're bidding against all the other companies that are running ads for that keyword. Um, yeah. And it's not always the case that just the person who pays the most gets to the top, but that's essentially how it works. There's other factors involved, but the more you pay, the more you'll be seen. Um, so it can be really quick, really easy, really straightforward, but it can be quite expensive um, depending on how many other people are in that sphere and how much they're paying. Um, it can be really, really cheap, but it can be really, really expensive. Um, okay, so we've, now we've been doing pay-per-click for, I've been doing it for 20 years, I think, right from the beginning. We did it for our clients in dentist, UK clients, trying to get dent UK clients, and now we're doing it for um, global clients here. We use LinkedIn. In. we're using um, google pay-per-click we put adverts out and as you said it can rack up money expenditure quite quickly but if you're very specific about what you're trying to target it can be really really good so from on a google side of things obviously you target certain keywords specific keywords or keyword combinations and then as you said google will put you higher up the list on linkedin and Facebook, it might not be keywords you're targeting, it might be actual demographics of people that you're targeting. So I might be looking for accountancy firm owners in the London area, okay? So I can get that kind of demographic and then target those types of people on LinkedIn and they'll see the adverts. Now, will that take some time and effort? Yeah, of course it will. And do people straight away um, click and buy? Of course they don't, okay? Um, but it's it's a factor in building that trust up in trying to market your firm, market your business. And that, I think, is a really important thing. It's trust. Because um, as an accountancy firm, if you're trying to do offshoring, trying to do outsourcing, how trying to get out, out international clients is trust. That's what people want to hear that you're or see that you're a trustworthy organization. So pay-per-click is one strategy. OK, so what other strategies have we got, Chris, up our sleeve? Uh, before I go on to the second one, I just want to add to that that um, you're right, trust is everything in yeah. marketing. Um, and the first step towards trust is them hearing about you. And th again, the easiest way for that is pay per click. Um, yeah. So we don't do it a huge amount, but if you're entering a sphere, um, an industry, a region for the first time, the easiest way is to get some even cheap Google ads because then yeah. they'll at least hear about you. Um, and then the next time they hear about you in the second step, I'm going to talk about you won't be brand new to them. They'll be like, oh, I know that name. I saw it somewhere or other. So they must be a name in this sphere. And the other way is search engine optimization, SEO. Well, let me just go back, actually, before we come on to yeah. that, actually. So on that pay-per-click <clears throat> side of things, you're, I think you're spot on. It's a great way to get yourself known in a market relatively quickly. Um, even, as you said, it might just be a little bit of exposure, but they say, oh, okay, oh, it's uh, Samara or it's Aaron or whoever, what you're trying to do, they'll say, okay, that face. And... The, the, this is all about getting you're in a funnel ultimately you're, all, you're trying to you, you've got a funnel coming narrow and ultimately you've got people at the top of the funnel thinking who are cold leads who are thinking seeing you for the first time on linkedin or facebook or in, um, instagram or google or whatever and they're coming into the funnel but eventually hopefully as they go down the funnel 
you're building trust with them because they'll see you in other mediums as Chris is going to come on to in a minute and eventually come down to the bottom of the funnel. And not all of those people who came in at the top will ultimately buy something from you or become a customer of you, but hopefully they've gone far, far enough down the funnel to feel, you know what, I trust these guys. I'm going to call them and hopefully do some business with them. And that's that's the key to this whole thing is getting people, a whole bunch, you might have a thousand people in the funnel, but eventually it narrows down to two people at the bottom who actually buys. Okay. So, and it's moving moving them down the funnel in a trustworthy uh, a way to do this. Um, so, sorry, Chris, you're going to go on right. to. Um, and again, just to add to that, um, what we call that are touch points. So, the first time they see Google Ads, that's their first touch point. It's the first time they touch your uh, mm -hmm. brand. Then the next time, maybe they see one of your blogs or a webinar, that's another touch point. Then maybe they go onto your website, that's another mm -hmm. one. And obviously, it completely depends, but they used to say the average is like five or six touch points before someone will buy from you, whether that be a product or a service. Um, cause you, you very rarely go on Google search for something and just buy from the first place you see, yeah. um, you either buy from somewhere you've already heard about. So you've already had those touch points or you find someone that you like the look of. So you look a little bit on their website, you check out their social media, um, you look at their Google reviews, but if you did all, each of them, that'd be four touch points. Yeah. Um, and then you'll buy from them. So you want to give people as many of these, um, touch point possibilities as you can. And the next one is probably the one we specialize in, as certainly the one I specialize in, is search engine optimization. Um, now, this one, unlike pay-per-click, is free to an extent. Obviously, you have to get someone to do it unless you do it yourself. Um, but you don't have to pay straight up for it like you would with an ad. Um, but it is the one that takes the most amount of time and effort. But it can be the one that um, <clears throat> is the most useful and the most effective because you get to hopefully the top of Google or at least on the front page. And if you do it properly, you'll stay there. Whereas, But, but before you go on to that, Chris, obviously search mm -hmm. engine optimization is dependent on the website, correct? Oh, of course, yeah. So, um, so let's, let, let's even cut to okay. the, the basics. Good point. Um, so yeah, if, what if is the, the key is a website, firstly. Yeah. yeah, if you look for international clients, you're probably going to have to build a website for that region. Um, so if you are looking to enter the UK market, you're going to need a .co.uk website or a .com website. I don't think I've ever seen a website that wasn't .co.uk or .com ranking um, in the UK. Um, same with America. If you're trying to enter the American market, you're going to need a .com website. Mm -hmm. Our .co.uk website does rank in America. Um, I mean, our dental practice websites rank there. Our um, uh, UK accountancy website ranks there, our .com, Samara Global website ranks there, um, but it's a lot easier to do that with a .com website. Um, so if you're in whatever region you're entering, you're going to need a website for that region. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's going to be so much harder to mm -hmm. even appear in Google at all mm -hmm. without that region's domain. Um, so that's the first thing you need to do. Um, now, when it comes to websites, what... We all, well, what I always uh, recommend is there are certain things you can do yourself and there are certain things you need to outsource. So pay-per-click, you can do yourself. It's yeah. really, really easy. SEO, if you take the time to learn about it, you can do yourself. Um, or you can outsource it. That's always useful. Just make sure you've got someone who knows what they're doing. Websites, don't do yourself. Don't get a, um, a mate to do it or a family member who's good at computers you need to get a professional developer to build your website because there's yeah. so much um, going on with it. So it needs to be stable, needs to be quick, needs to be built for mobile. Um, it needs to be, again, on the right domain uh, region-wise. Um, so, yeah, we can go into how to build a website and what it needs, but honestly, that's one you need to outsource um, mm. or get someone in-house to do it. But either way, you need a professional developer, not yourself or a template you find online or um, a friend or family member. It really, this is something you need to invest in. It's not a cost, it's an investment. Mm. Um, but yeah, the basics are fast, stable, um, well-structured, secure, and mobile friendly, or mobile first. So it needs to be and, and, user, and, use, and, use, and the user experience has to be really good as well. I think exactly, yeah, the user journey and user experience are hugely important. Um, it needs to be easy for someone to use. It needs to look good. I, that sounds really straightforward and obvious, but you'd be surprised how many websites, not just that we see, but next time you're on Google, have a look at it and you'll think, well, why is that there? That should be over here. And this menu is a little bit complicated. And 
um, all those things a few years ago um, weren't as important because Google's algorithm couldn't really pick that up. Mm. It just knew, it used a bounce rate, essentially. It knew people landed on your website, they got bored or they got confused and they left. But now Google's AI algorithms for SEO are so good, it kind of knows mm. how good your website is um, and it'll mark it accordingly pretty much straight away. So that's become really, really, really important. Um, so yeah, websites, outsource it. Um, then SEO is essentially making sure your content and your website is good enough to rank highly on Google or Bing or um, any other uh, browser, but everyone uses Google. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and there's so much to talk about with SEO. I could honestly talk about it all week. Um, but the basics are you want to um, produce content and you need that content to perform a certain function. So what you really want to do is teach people because if you're just trying to inform in the sense of, um, I don't know, how do I do a tax return? ChatGPT, Gemini, these things can answer that probably better than you can. Yeah. Um, and not just that, but other but websites will use ChatGPT and Gemini to produce that content. Mm. Um, so content is becoming a little bit different because AI is just swamping the market with it. So you need to add extra things. Um, and what that means is you need to add um, expert opinion and expertise, authority, trust. Um, in SEO, it's known as EEAT. Um, you can't just have a blog saying how to do a tax return, how to perform payroll. Um, you need to have stats, figures, because that's something that um, chat, chat and AI doesn't really do at the moment. It doesn't really back up its uh, opinions, for want of a better yeah. word, with much um, data. And that's something you can do. Um, you need to have like bibliography, reference things, but also have your qualifications on there. Have other experts in the industry on your blog, your podcast, your webinars. Yeah. Um, you need to really show your audience and therefore Google that you know what you're talking about. You didn't just get your content from uh, an AI source or you didn't just spend a couple of hours researching it and then threw something together in a thousand words. Yep. Um, so you need to really help people because a few years ago, Google brought in what was called the helpful content update, which meant that it started ranking content that was genuinely helpful to the user, not just content written for SEO purposes with a thousand words and the right keywords on it made yeah. to look good and that'll rank. Um, that won't work anymore. A few years ago, yeah, do that and you'll rank um, quite easily, but that doesn't work anymore. You need to help people genuinely. You need to really make things easy for them. You need to give them, um, you need to give them added value essentially. Um, so it has become a lot harder to rank um, in terms of content for SEO. Um, which is why other things like uh, social media has become a big thing. Um, and what I mean, I don't mean it's become a big thing recently. I mean, in SEO, a few years ago, you could just ignore social media and it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't affect your Google rankings, but it will now because um, Google is sort of turning SEO from search engine optimization to brand optimization. Um, and one of the best ways to get your brand out there to get mentions of in other places on the um internet to get followers interaction um is through social media so that's not just facebook and instagram and linkedin that's things like podcasts um so spotify and um that kind of thing they count and as well and also things like youtube as well remember yeah, google YouTube. google owns youtube okay yeah. so if you if you're adding videos and doing some great videos um on YouTube that will only help your search okay because yeah. they're, they're, they're linked together okay yeah uh, one of the things that quite nicely illustrates this is a few years ago one of the biggest things in SEO were backlinks so when another website links back to you that was good SEO um so people would basically go on things like Yell and yellow pages um and just list their um their business on local directories and online directories mm. and do that 100 times and you get 100 backlinks but Google doesn't really care about that anymore because anyone can do that. Um, yeah. What it wants is brand mentions. Um, and I don't know if the algorithm is starting to count unlinked brand mentions yet, but it is certainly going to. Um, so eventually being on someone's podcast, um, even if they don't link to your website, having your name, your brand, your website, your um, business mentioned, Google will pick that up. Um, mm -hmm. 
And that kind of brings me on to the third thing I was going to talk about, which is um, networking. So one of the best ways to get into a new industry is to link up, to connect, to network with people who already exist in that sphere. Um, so you don't, you shouldn't be thinking of people as competitors, really. Um, they're opportunities. So, I mean, it, even just in terms of SEO, forget lead um, generation, lead conversion for a second. If you can get onto other accountancy or accountants um, or finance podcasts, blogs, um, webinars, that's brilliant for you. Um, <clears throat> again, you might consider them a co um, competition, but it's more networking and it's brand reach and spreading your brand. That's kind of what this is all about. Um, whether it's pay-per-click, SEO or networking, um, <clears throat> it, you're spreading your brand. That's kind of what um, SEO and marketing is all boiling down to. Because things like pay-per-click and SEO, anyone can do, anyone can get good at, <clears throat> but a bad brand is less likely to spread than, than a good brand. Um, sure. Especially when you use things like social proof, like uh, reviews, other people in the sphere trusting you enough to have you on their podcast. Um, so that's kind of what marketing is becoming, spreading brands and building and I, brands. And I think now, if you look at what people who, look, who may be watching this, who, who watch it in the future, they want to get international clients. So <clears throat> it's it's not a matter of kind of cold calling, email cold calling. This is a, this is yeah. a professional industry. It's a matter of building that trust, as yeah. I said right at the yeah. beginning. And how do you build trust? You build trust by getting mentions in other press, other other podcasts. Where you have a good content, reliable educational content going out on YouTube or other channels. Um, that's what people want, and that's what international clients want. Okay, because that's how you're going to build your client base. Because they say, "Oh, it's you again." Oh, he was talking about this, or she was talking about that. It's that mm -hmm. trust, and I think that's where many people go wrong. In addition, as Chris was saying, networking. Now, obviously, you can network on places like LinkedIn um, to some extent, but nothing beats meeting people face to face. OK, however, a big however, I know lots of people do come maybe to do exhibitions in America or UK or and stuff. And it's a costly exercise. and You have to think, is it actually worth it? OK, um, more probably a better way maybe to um, kind of maybe attend events and network as opposed to spending tens of thousands of pounds on actually having an exhibition stand in these places. Um, I've done, I've done everything to, my, to be honest myself, I've done exhibition stands and I look at the, the return on investment. It's probably not the best, what best return I've had. Okay. Where I get my best return is definitely online. So education content, educational content, YouTube articles, blog posts, videos, newsletters, that type of thing. Okay. And I think that will be your best return on investment um, as opposed to spending like an exhibition stand at an event in London might cost you easily like 10 to 15,000 pounds. OK, um, and so you need to get a good, good few clients to cover that. And hopefully you might even get one. You do would cover that. But sometimes it's not even it's quite hard even just to get one client. OK, so you've got to look at are they the best avenues for you? So. Any other points to add, Chris, from your thought well, process? On, um, <clears throat> on the topic of uh, um, stands at conventions, I was going to mention that kind of really nicely illustrates the um, uh, touch point idea. Because if you think about the last time you were at a convention um, and you walked past, a, how many stands did you walk past that you'd never heard of and it didn't even occur to you to go talk to them? But as soon as you see one that you've heard of before, even if you don't go talk to them, you think, oh, it's them. I, I know them. So you might stop and even if you just pause, that's enough, really. Um, it might do. I agree with you, but I think sometimes, and you're right, it's just working out, is that the place you want people to pause? No, at? no, but um, that's just to illustrate that um, yeah. touch points and getting your name out there and getting your name heard of Correct. at least once is enough of a touch point to make people pause. Um, if they've never heard of you, they're just going to... They probably won't even think twice. They'll be like, okay, someone I've never heard of, another person never heard of, another person never heard of. But if they've seen you, even if it's just a Google ad, but if they've seen you on social media, if they've heard of a, a website, they saw you on a podcast or heard of you on a podcast or saw your name somewhere, yeah. they're more likely to stop and go, oh, I know those guys. I've, I've heard of them before. Yeah. Um, and they're far more likely to then come and talk to you. And that applies all over marketing, whether that be they stumble across your website and they've never heard of you, they're just going to, 
blindly mm. scroll past it. But if they've heard of you before, they might stop and go, I've heard of these guys before. Let me just see what they're doing. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's that touch point. And, you, and you've got to be good to make – I think the, the danger is with exhibitions, you can have those touch points, but that's a very expensive touch point and will you get the return? Whereas, okay, I appreciate it. It takes effort to create a video. It takes effort to write an article. It takes effort. But that can be much more cost effective and a better ROI, ROI yeah. for you. Okay. Um, I combine that with some Google ads um, or, or pay per click ads. I think that is much better. And that's kind of honestly where I'm putting all my efforts in going yeah. forward. I've got, I've done, I committed to a few exhibitions over the years and we've got another one coming up soon. But I think where I had my best ROI has always been through content generation, content creation. Um, because people get to know your personality. They watch your video. They read your articles. They get to say, well, I'm aligned with him or I'm aligned with her. I like that, what they're saying. I'm going to call them up. So I think yeah. those are kind of the ways that you need to start thinking about if you're going to get international clients, if you'll get people who's going to trust you. Um, people aren't, or well, international clients aren't looking for cheap. They're looking for good value, okay? But they're not looking for cheap. They're looking for good value and excellent service. And the danger is if you try and price yourself too cheap, you won't be able to offer a good service because you won't attract the right talent, which then has a knock-on effect on what you deliver and then has a knock-on effect on, on, on the business overall. So trying to be the cheapest is never really a good option. Trying to offer a great service and charge appropriately for it so you still make a decent return is the right way forward. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah, so I think what we've done covered today, I know we kept this vid webinar relatively short, over just over 20 minutes. Um, but in summary, in my mind, well, actually, but Chris, why don't you go first? In summary, if you had to summarize what we've discussed today, what are the most important things? If they, if they, someone wants to go and get international clients, if they're, say, based in India, they want to get clients, what would be your top three tips? <clears throat> My top three tips would be start off with some pay-per-click ads, again, just to get that first touch point out there. Whether people don't click on your ads, you kind of don't want them to because then it doesn't cost you anything. Um, but it's just to get your name in front of people's faces yeah. for the first time so that when they see your website, your services, it's not the first time they've ever heard of you. They've already heard of you. They've already seen your name. They go, oh, yeah, I know these guys. Because subconsciously, they'll assume you must be um, at least a player in the sphere because yeah. they've heard of you before. It's not the first time. Then... Either learn about SEO or get someone in who's good at SEO and get working on your content, um, whether that be blogs, articles, courses, podcasts, or just your service pages. Um, you want to get as high in Google as possible. And it might be worth getting someone. So if you're trying to enter the UK market, get a UK SEO person just because they're going to know certain things about the culture, about the language, about um, just the nuances of that region that yeah. will help you oh, uh, hugely. Um, and then get your name out there, network with people, get on blogs, get on podcasts, um, talk to people, get, um, find out if you can ref uh, set up referral things or um, uh, cooperative work, Any anything to get your name out there because this is all about brand awareness nowadays. It's not just about website or it's not just about SEO. It's not all of this is now part of brand awareness. Um, yeah, but I think brand awareness like I, I was at a, an event the other night, an awards evening here in London, and people spend thousands of pounds just to be have a table or to yeah. show their brand or sponsor the event. Is it? I think what what we're seeing is it's a very crowded place. Okay, and can you? Is it? Is that money you're putting into that? I know people have to spend more money just to be seen at these events, for instance, or, or, or evenings. And you wonder, do is it actually? Do you actually get the return on that? Whereas the beauty, the beauty of online is that you can measure, monitor, see returns, see if things are working or not working pretty immediately at a relatively kind of low cost. Um, and that's where I would nine times out of 10 um, put my money into. Of course, there are certain offline things we may do, but historically, the last 20 odd years working in the financial and accounting industry has taught me that, you know what, just focus online. If you do that, if you dominate online, you'll dominate offline as well. Yeah, when I say networking and connecting, I I largely mean online, especially if you're yeah. um, trying to enter a different country. Mainly just because yeah. it's easier to, you, you don't have to travel. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot easier to yeah, do. Yeah, a lot easier, a lot cheaper, and sure, your reach sure. bigger. Sure. At some point in the future, you might want to host your own events in, in country or do something, and that could be a good idea. Um, whereas if you've got some following and say, oh, actually, I'm going to do an event in London or 
New York or wherever. And that's a very good idea, but only once you've got some following and you've got some traction yeah. behind it. Once they've had those five, six, 10, 15 touch points, touch points online, because yeah. they've seen and it interacted yeah. with your content. Yeah. But yeah, okay, well, thank you, Chris. I thought we kept thank it you. relatively short. I hope people got some ideas of what we do, how to get into, how we get international clients. Um, ultimately, it's about taking that step and trying these things. And we'll go into more detailed strategies um, kind of later on and further in the webinar series. In addition, we have the events we've got in Delhi um, in December and Gurgaon um, at the Samara Global Summit, where we'll be going into more detail specifics around how to do videos, how to do blog posts, how to write articles, how to do a newsletter, all these types of things. Okay. So if that's of interest, um, please do come and join us there as well. Okay. And we'll also be um, launching a new course in January on yep. how to uh, market an accountancy firm. Correct. Correct. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks, Chris. And I uh, hope people found that useful. And uh, and please do watch the recording if you didn't manage to, manage to get to, to, to attend this today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.